I'm with Jess Weixler. You play Nicole in the movie Apartment Troubles. How are uh-huh. you doing? Very good. Um, so tell me about your character, Nicole. Nicole is a narcissist. <laughs> we... We wanted to show a codependent relationship, which is essentially one is a bit more of a narcissist and one is needs to be needed. Um, That's always a good relationship to have. A great relationship. Hence why there's a change over the course of, of the movie. They must, they must change their ways. But it was really fun playing somebody who is outlandish like a full-blown narcissist is. And we did use a lot of other buddy movies to fashion our characters and the character dynamic. Things like The Odd Couple, where we really pushed their personalities apart, but also very much this movie with Nail and I, which is a British cult film. The incre- I would in no way say that Nicole is as narcissistic and amazing as With Nail is and With Nail and I, but I did look at his character and go like, okay, that, that's how you do that. <laughs> And uh, how would you describe, uh, I guess, your dynamics? You, you mentioned you're the narcissist and uh, Olivia's the, I guess, I guess codependent is the best way to describe it. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the way they're just feeding off of each other and uh, kind of, I guess, sucking the life out of each other in a way. Yes. And get, and giving it. <laughs> there must be some good side or else they wouldn't do it. <laughs> yeah. The addiction. Well, um, oh, go ahead. I, I think that. You know, in in the good sense, they are supporting each other's dream, even though their their dream is like abstract art. They they at least believe in each other. I mean, that's one of the sweet aspects of their relationship. They want each other to succeed. They don't want each other to sort of give up on what they're doing, even though that in turn makes makes them do inappropriate things at inappropriate times. They're like, just do it. What's right for you, even though doing Anton Chekhov's Seagull on a reality TV talent show is completely inappropriate. But, you know, their heart is in the right place. Yeah, and they definitely work together to pull that one off. Right? They do that today. Yeah. Okay. Right, it was an amazing scene, for one thing. Well, let, let's talk about the making of the film. You know, I, I feel like today, uh, f- especially for independent filmmakers, it appears to be a lot easier to put your dreams to film, so to speak. Do you think you could have done this 10 years ago, or do you think this is the right time for the independent filmmaker? I loved independent film a decade ago, or, or even, like, indie, indie film in the 90s was um, amazing, like Sex, Lies, and Videotape and stuff like that, but those were bigger budgets. And it's amazing what you can do with very little money now. And we shot this movie in 14 days. And that's because the equipment is so good. And people are just game Mm -hmm. to hustle and make stuff happen however they can, especially first-time filmmakers. So I think it is a great great time for indie film. There's a lot of it coming out, and there's a lot to sort of sift through and find out for people to figure out what they'll like, what they'll want to watch. Mm-hmm. But it, what you can do with these cameras now and how quickly you can move is amazing. You filmed this in both L.A. and New York, which uh, is, uh-huh. is a is a task in itself, especially from a budget standpoint. We were blessed that our producers were like, yeah, you, you know, this is, it's got a road trip element to it. And we were also blessed that one of our producers knew someone with a private plane. Because that, not that we flew on a private plane, but we at least shot a scene in a private plane, yeah. which which did so much of the storytelling for us because we really wanted to show that they came from different backgrounds. And even though Nicole has been ostracized from her family emotionally and they aren't giving her money anymore, she did come from wealth. Right. And that sort of is a big part of who she is. It adds to her entitlement. And she can just walk onto a private plane yeah. because she knows the pilots and they will fly her somewhere. Yeah. I'm so Which, that's poor. a lot. <laughs> yeah. I'm so dirt poor, but yet I can still get on a jet plane. <laughs> <laughs> One day, I hope we can all just walk onto a private <laughs> plane and they take us wherever we want to go. Yeah. Um, but it was, re- it was really nice to be able to show those worlds, the sort of dinginess and like hardcore scrappy living that was New York and then they walk into like the lap of luxury that is Nicole's family in LA. Mm-hmm. That you know that quasi mansion we got to shoot in. Yeah, it was just nice to 
to show those two worlds. And, and then, and then also, you know, the the other side to it is the distribution. You know, you you're in a few theaters, um, but uh, predominantly you're going to be on video on demand on iTunes. Is is that easier nowadays, getting distribution in that way, or is there still challenges to getting your movie to an audience? I think the biggest challenge is marketing, because these platforms are amazing for access, for getting out there, but, but the question is still, how do you convince people to watch your movie? Yeah. <laughs> You're like, watch this one. And it's just getting it out there enough, hoping enough people see the trailer, hoping enough people hear about it on shows like this. Mm -hmm. I think in the indie world, you do still have to kind of hustle to tell people what's out there. Because there is a lot to choose from. Yeah. I mean, I definitely get access to a lot of... Uh, the ability to see a lot of independent films and you, you in the sea of movies out there, especially against the big studios, you know, your heart sinks a lot when you realize it's going to be a hard, it's going to be hard for a movie like this to find an audience at all. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, the thing that kind of happened by chance is that we, we got Will Forte and Jeffrey Tambor and Megan Mullally two years ago, you know, and they're friends of ours and they agreed to do this movie, which was a beautiful thing because they're such comedic geniuses. Mm -hmm. But then Will and Jeffrey Tambor have blown up in the yeah. past year. And this was shot before those shows were shot that, that they blew up on. So it, it kind of is just lovely that we have people who, I mean, they were going to be genius geniuses anyway, but more people know who they are now. Yeah. Which will hopefully, hopefully that'll make even more people go like, oh, I like this cast. I I know. Yeah, I mean Jeffrey's been around a long time, but now he's, right. you know, he's he's got his own show now. Um, he's a gold globe winner now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, and Will Forte. I mean, just the strides he's been able to make past Saturday Night Live. I mean, a question I have is, you know, about that supporting cast, were they in mind when you wrote the movie? Uh, Megan, especially, uh, she seemed to have really created a character out of that. And um, was that in mind, and were you giving her a lot of ideas about her character? You know, it, it was a relationship, but because we were dealing with great people, if they had ideas, I mean, we wanted them to run with it. And we did write the characters with actually each of them in mind, because we sort of knew that we knew them and there was a chance we could get them. So we, we wrote the script thinking of them and then pitched it to them like, we wrote this part for you, we really hope you do it. And then they luckily were each available for a day or two to be to come in and do it. But we did let people like... Will and Megan and Jeffrey have moments where they where they could just go on an improv tangent. Yeah, they're so good at it. Supporting cast is amazing. All that stuff about Will's mom, straight straight out of the mind of Forte. <laughs> okay, well I won't spoil that one. Um, <laughs> let me ask you also. Oh, uh, so your character is the artist in the movie. In the apartment, we see a lot of your character's artwork. Is is that? I I wasn't sure because when I saw the credits, it looked like that. Those are that's existing artwork, or was that created for the movie? One or two of them was existing artwork, and an, and another created for the movie in the apartment. But because we had this amazing woman, um, Amber, oh, okay, what's her last name? Can't believe I'm blanking. She came in and I'm gonna look this up. I'm just talking uh, and did a lot of it with our set designer, Katie Hickman, uh -huh. um, who worked so fast, I couldn't believe it. I mean, they, they made stuff overnight, um, but the, there's one thing called the masses, which is all the gloves yeah. filled with sand going up the ladder, uh -huh. <laughs> and that, that existed before. That had been an art installation somewhere that Amber Kelly Oh my gosh, such an easy last name too, Amber Kelly. And so together they brought in pieces she'd already done and and made some. But what I love is this, that the name she had did remind me of the kind of name that Nicole would use. And, and we took a lot of them out of the movie, but we, we had names like this one's called Latex Misunderstanding. <laughs> Does it, like just, you know, high concept. <laughs> like what could, what could it mean? The masses is what that glove on it. What does that mean? <laughs> I guess I, I saw it more like household item art. Things yeah. you find around the house and just putting it out there. Garbage art. <laughs> Garbage and spray paint art. 
All right, well, thanks a lot. I'm talking with Jess Weixler. Uh, you play Nicole in Apartment Troubles, and it's in select theaters now, and video on demand in iTunes if you want to either rent or purchase. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate the interview. Oh, my pleasure.